This is just to keep breathing. With your host, Richard Curtin, The National Radio. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Just Keep Breathing on Rational Radio, rationalbroadcasting.com. This is Just Keep Breathing. We're here every Tuesday, every Friday. My in-studio guest today, the one, the only, Houston, from Houston, Texas, Alexis Nicole Whitney. Hi, y'all. Hey, girl. What's up? Nothing much. Just here. How are you? You look good. Do I? Yeah. <clears throat> I wish you could see how good you look. <laughs> Because, you know, who, who painted you today? Me, myself, and I. Oh, uh, uh, I can tell. Can you? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I know that my, my eyebrows and my liners are not crooked because they're tattooed. Are they? Yes. When did that happen? Years ago. Really? I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. So I know they're not crooked. You sure? Yes. Did you see them when, when they were tattooed? No. <laughs> So uh, you you just got a whole bunch of people telling you that they're not crooked. No, I think You've I'm got not. some shady friends because <laughs> I I wish you could see those crooked eyebrows. <laughs> For well, those of you that are tuning in and don't know, Alexis Nicole Whitney, what what is the actual um, condition that you have? I'm visually impaired or blind. <clears throat> visually impaired, blind, but you you started losing your vision at about. Um, in 98, November 7th, 98. So I you were 46? No, actually <laughs> half of that. Well, less than, more than half. I was 22, actually, when I lost my sight. And it was gradual, wasn't it? Yes, I had um, headaches. I had a brain meningitis, and it caused permanent damage and swelling to my octave nerve. Hmm. Yeah. How does, how does one recover from that, really? How do you... How do you, one, take the news, and then how do you accept it and move on? Well, at first, I mean, of course, like anybody would be, I mean, I was depressed, you know. But um, after a while, it, you know, it came to my senses that I couldn't do nothing about it. You know, it, it's just an obstacle that I had to overcome in my life. And, of course, um, now it's more frustrating than anything because, you know, when I was 22, I was already driving and being able to just get up and go get something to eat when I wanted to or go out to the club when I wanted to. And now it's hard because I have to depend a lot on my friends. And, I mean, I've been blessed that I do have the friends that do help me. But, you know, it still gets a little frustrating because I know they have their own lives and stuff to live. And, you know, it's just it's unfortunate that I have to depend on people. And that's, you know, I get frustrated with that. We were talking about this um, actually last night. Do you know? Um, do you know other uh, visually impaired people? Actually, I've known of some people that c- have come up to me and said, um, in many occasions, that have said to me, um, "Oh, you know, I I was blind for two years, but then I got my eyesight back, or uh, for a year, or a couple of months." Um, I know this one person in Houston that is legally blind, but he could still see. Uh, more than I can, of course, you know, he can walk by himself and stuff, but I mean, not to where I've known, you know, people that were totally blind like I am now, you know. Um, Well, you know, what we were really talking about was, you know, how does a gay person define their gayness, if you will, if they're blind? How do you know you're gay if you can't if you can't see it. Well, because like I said, I went blind at the age of 22. I had Yeah, no, uh, this is really not for you. Oh, for like for it's for yeah. someone who um, who is born blind. Um, you know, and I, because we all know, uh, it, it's not about sight. Right. Um, but it is about sight, isn't it? Um, a lot of times it is, but in, in, you know, and like the way people do say, you know, people do take things for granted, like their eyesight. You know, instead of looking at a person for the inside and what they really are from the inside, a lot of people always judge them by their physical looks. Right. You know, and it's true because now I've been a lot more open with different people where, you know, little things would disattract me from a person. You know, dirty toenails or do- dirty nails or, you know, the way they had their hair cut or the way they wouldn't shave. And so it's gotten to the level to where I really don't look at that anymore. Well, I can't look at it. Um, I just, you know, pay attention more to the, their heart and their personality. So has has your ability to do that heightened? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. 
most definitely. And I have um, a lot of times where I know when a person, I can sense when they're up to no good. You know, like a, a lot Can of, you? Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just an instinct now that I have. To, <coughs> oh, you know, I know this person's up to no so good. So trade came I'm over, and then he went to go get a glass of water, and then you, uh, oh, he's in uh, there yeah, stealing my cash. Uh-huh. Or, you know, and that's why I don't even give him an opportunity to I'll throw my wallet underneath the bed uh, three steps away from, the, you know, or underneath this drawer under my panties or, you know, <laughs> just different things like that, too, where I know that, you know, they don't. You're going to you're gonna be able to hear the ruffling of, right, yeah. of them looking. Mm-hmm. Um What is it that you miss the most? Um, like I said, I guess being able to be, uh, being able to do stuff on my own. Yeah. When, you know, at the age of 22, I was very independent. And I, I still, to a certain extent, am, am very independent. I hate to depend on people. You know, I hate to having to have to look for somebody to help me with my makeup and have to help me through, you know, through the shows to take me on stage and off stage and, you know, guide me through the aisles like at the Rose Room. You know, it's just frustrating. And that's what I miss the most, being able to be self-sufficient. Do you miss anything like um, seeing a man's hairy chest? No, (laughs) because I I would miss. I was never attracted to hairy chest. Uh, Oh, no, I just... What about now? Um... Now I can overlook it, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know, at the point where I'll say they have hair. How long did it take you to become this comfortable? You know, um, I, I'm just going to say joking about it, because we, we have a really good time. I mean, and you, and you have a really good time with it. And um, I, I want to point out that Alexis Nicole Whitney will be performing in the Rose Room Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And it's at 3911 Cedar Springs. You are a very special guest this weekend from Houston. And um, so my, my question is, I believe that's you making noise. What noise? Did you not hear it? No. You're making noise, gal. I am. You were. So um, you've, you've just, you're, you're a really good sport. And you participate in the sport of having fun with it. How long did it take to, to get there? Um, actually, um, it was really right after I woke up from a coma because I was in a coma for two weeks. And when I woke up, I realized that I was blind. And, you know, I was going through the depression, but I was still trying to joke about things, you know, because that's what kept me going. And that's what still keeps me going. You know, it's not something that I want people to feel sorry for me about or, you know, be like, oh, you know, she's blind. No, that's nothing. You know, it's just something that, like I said, I had to overcome. And, you know, when I got out of the coma, you know, within maybe three weeks, I was already back on stage and people were mad at me. You know, there were some entertainers that were like, why is she doing it again? You know, she's barely got out of the hospital. You know, she's blind. She hasn't recovered from her, you know situation but it's just something you know being on stage is my heart it's my passion you know and when I perform that's when I get to let it out and that's why I enjoy it so much you know so it's just you know it, it the obstacle that I overcame is just something that you know why am I going to feel bad about it or why am I not going to joke about it when you know people kind of feel sometimes oh did I offend her no nothing offends me especially nothing to have to do with my sight you know, it most definitely because if, if I were to live my life like that, it wouldn't be the way it is right now. So what um, what have you learned? This has been, a, you know, a gradual. I remember when you really could see a little. Is that gone? Um, I'm able to see. I don't, the best way to describe it is if you're looking into a bright light, and I think I've told you that before. If you look into a bright light, and stare into it for like a couple of seconds. You close your eyes and then run your hand in front of your face and you see a little shadow. That's what I see. So you just see shadow? Yeah, like a little shadow or I um, I can see like when it's light or dark or I can, I can distinguish when um, like a dark color on a light color, you know, mm-hmm. so. See, that is you. Oh yeah, that's my phone. I'm sorry, y'all. <coughs> I can't see the buttons so it's lower. Can you see, can you differentiate between like red and yellow and orange or or is it just bright and dark? Bright and dark, yeah. Mm. Um, sometimes I can distinguish from like blue. For some odd reason, blue really stands out to me. 
like the blue screen on the TV, as I'm listening to the TV and it's watching me, I could see the blue screen. <laughs> That's what it looks like. So, you know, blue color really stand out. But, like, black and white is really, really, like, when it's a darker color, like black, navy blue, dark green, versus to a white, like, pink, pastel blue, you know, that's when I could really tell the difference. Is it difficult? Is it difficult to not feel alone? I would think that if... If I had to walk around with my eyes closed or without sight, <clears throat> that um, I would get feelings of loneliness. No. Do you ever feel alone, even with people, with other people in the room? Well, I can't say that no, because I was going to say no. But yeah, there is sometimes, like when I feel when I'm at the bar, sitting at the bar, and you know my my friends are having a good time. You know, sometimes I tune out and think like, oh, you know, how would it be if I did have my sight? Yeah. You know, how, how would it be? What would I be able to see? Or what would I be looking at right now if, you know, if I could see? Or, you know, they're conversating amongst themselves. I'm like, would they be conversating with me if I could see? You know, but maybe because it's something that you have to be able to see to go ahead and conversate about. You know? and, and you participate in going to watch the shows. So what is it, what is it like um, sitting in a full room watching a drag show that is an extremely visual art form um, sitting there really not being able to participate by watching do you do you feel the energy of an entertainer oh yes most definitely you know I also it, and also it's by feeding off of the audience and stuff sure. and of course the people around me will talk but then I also have the imagination to where I think, okay, well, they describe it to me and say, okay, well, she's wearing a blue dress and, you know, strapless. And then that's when I kind of picture them. Even if they're ugly, sometimes I try to picture them pretty, you know, or when they're pretty, I'm like, ugh, she's ugly, you know, or just the things like that, that, you know, it's my imagination. So I just let it run wild. <laughs> um, but, but you can, but you know that when the crowd goes up, you know that you know, Crystal just stripped, or oh yeah, or, she got naked, or, or, or yeah, someone or just got Erica, naked, yeah. or someone just did a uh, death drop, or right. um, and can you feel that energy of, of of high energy dance too, as opposed to um, plus you also have the music, so you know what kind of performance is being done. Right. Yes. Yeah, and it's, it's also that yeah, you know, it's just I mean, the the crowd has a lot to do with. It. Could you judge a pageant? I would love to judge interview. That's my favorite category. I would love to be able to judge interview. I, of course, you know, talent and evening gown, I mean, it would be a little harder, you know, because, of course, I would have somebody. I mean, if somebody were to describe it to me and sit there and be my, my eyes and I would be the vocal part of it or, you know, <coughs> having them to write, okay, well, no, write that, you know. But um, I think it would be a little harder. But I just, that's my dream. I've always wanted to judge interview. Um, and you're you're heavily titled. You're a former Texas Entertainer of the Year. You're um, uh, you've got a myriad of titles. Right, I'm a former Miss Oklahoma USA, and right now I'm actually um, the national title holder for the Unlimited system. I'm Miss Unlimited. And so, what has been your what has been your greatest challenge as an administrator? As um, you know, do you, do you have to have someone that um, is, we'll say, your right hand man? Um, a lot of times, yes. Well, I mean, just to be my eyes, yeah. you know, but a lot of times it's just, okay, well, what does it say? Or how, how is this going? Or, you know, um, but as far as entertaining, no, by all means, never, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm, I've got that down as far as traveling. I can travel by myself, you know, um, I, I already learned the airports, you know, I know what I have to do, what I can do, what I can't do, what they do help me with, what they don't help me with, you know, Greyhound, you know, I will get on on a Greyhound or an airplane in a hot minute by myself, you know, so it's just something that I've gotten used to, but as far as administrative, you know, of course, because I can't see, but, you know, it's, other than that, I mean, you know, being vocal about different things and uh, stressing my opinion on what I feel we, needs to be changed, no, of course, I don't have a problem with that, but, you know, of course, just the visual part of it, yeah. When you do travel by yourself, do you have anxiety about it? No, never. Yeah. Um, it's exciting to me. I love it. I, you know, I meet different people, you know, um, I could, I, I imagine what, you know, what the men are looking at me like, or, you know, what the ladies are looking at me like, or, you know, it's just, it's exciting to me. It's, I get a thrill out of it. You know, it's just, you know, maybe one day I'll get lost in Puerto Rico or in Hawaii, you know, I took the wrong flight and I'll be blessed with that, you know, but 
<laughs> but it's, 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 a, it's an excitement for me. It's nothing. I, there will be times where and I have like a maybe 45-minute layo- you know, 45 layover to where it would stress me out and be like, okay, am I going to make it on time? You know, because they let the, the plane, um, you know, um, on board and then they take me. But now I've learned to where, well, okay, well, if I miss a plane, you know, they have to take it upon themselves to put me on the next flight. What can I do about it? You know, it's, I've learned to live with things like that. Have you gotten stranded anywhere? Oh, yes. Have you? Yes, in, in um, Atlanta, Georgia. It was horrible. Horrible. Atlanta, Georgia, and in um, Charlotte, North Carolina. But I Yeah, mean, that Atlanta airport is, I, I, I hate it. I mean, well, no, and, you know, and it was actually fun because they actually, and I got a good thing out of it. Um, but <laughs> what was his name? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's a, a PG-13. <laughs> no, it's actually, you know, when I was in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, they made me miss my plane, of course. It was just the uh, flight attendant's fault, and um, I didn't make my plane. So they actually had to put me in a room. They paid for the room, so I got to stay in the room. And I actually met this young guy, um, 22 years old, from I don't remember where. He was very Leonardo that was just going from city to city, just traveling, just having fun. And it, we had a good time. You know, we were up till like 5 o'clock in the morning, and I had to leave at 7 o'clock. So, I mean, it was what it was, and... Uh huh. Mm. I was right. What was his name, girl? Dang. I don't remember his name. And <laughs> <laughs> That's not important. <laughs> but he followed me on Facebook, though. I he's, he's somewhere on my friends on Facebook. But. So how do you maneuver social media on computer? That I mean, we are a visual world, and um, you know, a phone and. How do you maneuver all this? Well, my phone are there are there, are there devices that are designed for visually impaired? Oh yes, most definitely. As far as computer, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I mean, um, a lot of times I've been blessed that I do have my friends that do look for, for you know um, look up my Facebook and tell me what messages and this and that. But the i the iPhones have Siri. Siri's my best friend now, and me and my friend Aiden that brought me today were just joking about it because you know um, Siri can read me a text when I get a text and I can tell her to send a text. Sometimes she misspells the words, but she sends it for me. So, you know, and she's able to tell me. I don't think she's misspelling. I think she's just understanding you incorrectly. Uh, well, because you're, you're kind of ghetto. No, it's probably because my <laughs> Mexican accent. <laughs> so I sound very Texan. <laughs> Mexican. <laughs> so, but, you know, it, and, you know, the iPhone is, a, it's, a, it's been a lot of fun. You know, I play with her a lot. You know, that's why I say she's my best friend because she never screams at me, but she does let me have it. You know, and I, I just joked about it with Aiden. Uh, Sundays is her day off. She don't like to mess with me on Sundays. I'll be like, Siri, can you call? No, Siri's not available. So it always happens from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sundays. So she she's at dinner. Yeah, she's no, she's just having the time off. She you know she needs some time off. She said, uh, uh, "You work me too much." <laughs> really? She really it says Siri's not available. Yeah, she. Really You're does. kidding. No, it's always and it's always on Sunday because I was like, "What is going on? This no, this ain't working." But I started paying attention and it was always on Sunday and I started paying attention to the time and it always happens between 6 and 8 p.m. on Sundays. So do you think that that, that she's getting some sort of update? <laughs> she's, well, she's in school. Something. She's again, you know, having a vacation, a dinner or something. She's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Somewhere. Or in Atlanta. She got somewhere. <laughs> she's having trade finally. Mm-hmm. Good girl. Yeah. Right, girl. I ask her, you know, Not she, mad at you. And I ask her, and I'm like, you know, I play with her, and I'll tell her certain things. She says, this isn't about me. This is about you. Oh, she'll, she won't answer questions uh-uh, personal? She doesn't get too graphic. She do you ask her if she gets trade? Yeah. I like, you know, I ask her, do you like to get your... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> she said, this isn't about me. This is about you. <laughs> I don't have Siri on my phone. I don't know why. Why don't I? Do you have an iPhone? Yes. What, which iPhone is it? Who knows? You probably just have to check out if you have the app on it. And the applications in Siri. Oh, so it's an app now? Yeah. I thought it came with like... Well, it does come with a phone, but you just have to um, activate it. Okay. Well, let's talk about your job. You live in Houston. Yes. And <clears throat> you are the current show director and showgirl. Yes. At... At TC's. It's, uh, I couldn't remember. I thought it was PC's for some no, reason, TC's. but TC's, yes. yes. Um, yes, and um, I, I th- thank God I've been there for a year and a couple of months. Um, October was actually a full year that I was there as a showgirl. September, I got hired as the show director now. 
um, I work there every Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays where I am the MC. So, what? Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. So you work five, six, five nights a week. Yes. And I'm off Mondays and Wednesdays, but you know it gets a little tiring. But the money's good, so I can't complain. Yep. Yeah. So, um, what happens at TC's? Who's on the who's, who's on Showcast? Um, we have different girls. Um, we have um, Ashley Houston is one of our showgirls. As far as um, Tanya Hyde is another. She's the other MC that MCs on Mondays and Wednesdays. Um, Crystal Star. We have um, a lot of Houston local girls. Um, um, Dakota Whitney goes up there sometimes from San Antonio. Cielo Whitney is also on there. Um, Keona Simone, Jada Brooks. It's, you know, a, a variety of good talent that we have there. So I'm really, really excited working with the girls. And, you know, it's been a, it's been nothing but a blast for me since September. So do you know that stage back oh, and forth? Yes, I know that club back and forth. Yeah. You know, and it's a bar. It's not really a club. It's more of a show lounge yeah. kind of thing. So I can walk from... The, from the back dressing room to the restroom by myself, just as long as there's no chairs pulled out or anything. Do you have a cane? No. For that moment? No. I just step, have, I just use little steps. <clears throat> Has anyone ever punished you by, um, by leaving the plunger in the toilet? No. Never. <laughs> it, w it wouldn't be a punishment. I think it'd be a <laughs> kind of exciting. I wouldn't leave the restroom. <laughs> So, um, how many girls are on each cast, uh, on, on each show at well, Tuesday, Wednesday? Well, it varies. On Tuesday, we're starting uh, the Alexis Nicole Whitney Survivor starting this Tuesday. And we have 12 contestants that will be uh, fighting for $600 cash prize. Um, on Wednesdays, we have the Hump Day Honey. They have three girls. On Thursday, we have the... What was it called? Hump the Honey? Hump Day Honey. You know how Hump Wednesdays Day are Honey, yeah, yes. Wednesdays are called Hump Days. Um, Thursdays we have the new girls on the block, which is uh, giving the opportunity to the new girls to come in and you know do a show, and that's their night. So it's myself and four of them. So I rot rotate them out. Fridays um, it's myself and four other girls. Saturday is myself and four other girls, and Sunday we have six, which are the regular cast members, and we call it the All Star Sunday cast. And so, um, do you do the lineup and all that other? Oh yes, of course. Well, I mean, I I say the lineup and then you know somebody writes it for me because we yeah. have an eraser board in the back and um and stuff like that and i do the payouts and stuff i'm in charge of the scheduling you know for every month and you know i put them on their days and who's going to be taken off here and taken off there and who's booked on this night so and so we've talked about um we've talked about how do you keep all this how do you keep all this together um and not being able to visually see it a good memory you, it, it has your memory heightened because oh, of yes, it? Yes, most definitely, yeah. Right. Um, we talked about, you know, several years ago that you, know, you were talking about going to, um, I don't know, visually impaired university. I can't remember uh, what it's School called. School for the Blind. It's School cold. for the Blind. I, yeah. knew, I knew it had in something Austin. in there. Yeah. It's in Austin. <coughs> but, you know, and like I, I think we discussed it before. It just, I just never took it upon myself to try to go. I maybe one time I took a tour of the school but I just think it would be difficult for me because for one I'm transgender so would they put me in with the male dorms or would they put me in with the female dorms you know and neither ones can see but I mean it would be kind of difficult I don't know this is something I mean I, and I wanted to ask but it wasn't the appropriate time when we were doing a tour with other people. So let's talk about this. Um, recently, there was a young lady who um, went to I, I, Oregon Baptist University. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and when she filled out her application, she is transgender. She, she marked female. She was on a scholarship. And um, about six months into her freshman year, they candor they basically expelled her from the university because of fraud said that she wasn't a female and that she was indeed a male but um she doesn't present herself as a man and the girl is gorgeous right the girl is i mean she's gorgeous and does not present herself as a female and doesn't look like you know doesn't look like a man like in gay terms unclockable <coughs> yeah unclockable right She's a little clockable. <laughs> um, a little. I mean, I, you know, I think that 
um, I think that you and I and other people right. would, you know, we would see something, and you might I hear something. You would, you would, you would know something. Mm -hmm. So um, you're filling out the application for uh, the University of the Blind or the College for the Blind. Do you put male or female? Well, I, unfortunately, I haven't been able to change my name because that's another discussion that I feel that would be. Um, a really hard topic to get it well I mean not to get into but as far as you know because if I have a male name and I'm changing it if I can just imagine you know and I, I don't want to bad mouth you know our Medicaid and Medicare system here in Texas because they're actually really great but if they have a difficult time with a change of address and it takes them like three to four months to finally get it together and you know for me to get accepted again for this and that you know like when I moved to Houston it took them up from March all the way to June for me to be able to start getting my benefits again um, you know so if it's hard for them to do a change of address I can just imagine the name change you know so I just never went through it to go through the name change so if uh, you know unfortunately I still have my birth name so when I you know how can I fill out an application and have my birth name and put female you know, I do live my life as a woman, but, you know, my birth name is still on my ID and it's still on my, you know, social security card. So it's just a logical thing to do. I mean, maybe I would put <coughs> M slash, you know, F or I don't know. You know, maybe they should have one with both or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think that's coming? I mean, do you, um, so don't you think that the T is coming? Right. Yeah, most definitely. I sh it should. Yeah. It should have been, you know, already in. I mean, if it's not in process, it should, you know, because most definitely nowadays it's it seems like we're being able to be accepted by society a lot more now. When um when did your journey of transgender start? Uh, six years ago, at the age of thirty, you know, I did it out of respect because um my, I was raised and by my grandparents, and they knew about it, you know, and my grandmother would always buy me, you know jewelry and wigs and stuff but it was just out of respect for her and you know I was their grandson you know so I never wanted to disrespect them and do it in front of them so as when they passed away you know I kind of really thought over it and said hey you know what it, you know they're gone it's finally time that I do something that's gonna make me happy you know so I started at the age of 30 and I am 36 gonna be 37 in May you look great for 45 <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. I, I learned from you. <laughs> Those crooked eyebrows. Mm. <laughs> oh. So you you started your you started your your um, transition at thirty. Yes. And um, what was your first process? And how long have you known? Have you known forever? For I wanted to be a woman? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, since I was like six, seven, you know, I've always played with Barbies. You know, I used to, you know, my favorite Barbie is, was a wedding Barbie. You know, I always wanted to get married in a wed white wedding dress, you know, and so it, I always knew I was more feminine than, uh, you know, usual boys that like to play with G.I. Joe's and cars and go outside and play football. And, no, I always wanted to be inside with the girls and gossiping and bury that inside what the girls do, you know, so I've always known that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so at 30, what was your first process? Um, started taking hormones. I, you know, I, you know, and the thing about it was when I was, you know, living my life as a male, I was very, you know, a full beard, you know, a heavy beard, you know, so I was scared of that. You know, I didn't know what really we could do to remove the hair removal and stuff. And, you know, I had heard about elect electrolysis, but I heard it was real painful and I don't like pain. So I was kind of scared of that. And a lot had to do with that as well because, you know, but, um, you know, once I started taking the hormones, it softened up my hair and, you know, um, made my, you know, my hair on my head grow, you know, a lot faster and my nails and stuff like that. And it slowed down my facial hair and my, you know, body hair and stuff. So um, I started doing that, taking hormones and then, you know, started doing laser on the face and, um, from there, kept getting little alterations here and there. Well, um, let's let's address this um, Baptist University young lady um, who's been expelled. Do you think it's fraud? I mean, I wouldn't call it fraud, but um, you know, it depends. I mean, does she have her name changed? 
I, 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 I honestly you know don't know. Saying? Yeah. I mean, and at some point, I, I do know the application was filled out, right. and um, and you know the the biggest deal is you know that that girls have boy names, right. boys have girl names. Now I know how many Stacys I know, mm -hmm. I know several Kellys. Um, I I know a boy named Dawn. You know, so um, you know I I don't think you can just judge someone on paper by their name. Well, yeah, that's true. <coughs> um, I, I don't believe that, I mean, it wouldn't be fraud, but I mean, it also has to do a lot with was she living in the dorms, you know, because, you know, there is some women that do, regardless, you know. But why did she get expelled? Well. I mean, they expelled her and took away all her uh, scholarships. Yeah, that, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, I'm not the president of the university so no, I would have she even um, you know she got a like a singing scholarship to be in the choir so um, you know I don't I don't think she was singing like this no right hey baby don't what you, you do <laughs> <laughs> old man river <laughs> like Lionel Richie <laughs> yeah who you impersonate often uh, yeah according to your eyes. <laughs> I just might add. So, um, you know, at, at what point do you know that you're being discriminated against? Because I, 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 I think that this is, this, this is just purely discrimination. And um, at some point, does it really matter if we're male or female or transgendered or gay or bi or um, Q? Because I'll, I'll tell you, I'm a little offended by the LGBT Q word, um, or why the inclusion of Q for questioning? That's so stupid to me. Right. Why? What? Um, did you know that the Q meant questioning? No, it's just like saying a C for curious. Y yeah, I mean it's no. LGBTQ to some people, and the Q is include including the people that are questioning. Well, uh, get out. Yeah. Um, when are we get, when are we going to just you know do the U V W X Y Z you know just it's just stupid at, at one point um, why can't we just be C for community right um, why can't we just be people for people and so that's kind of my point um, really what is the big problem with uh, gender how do you know that you're experiencing discrimination. I could just tell by their attitudes, yeah, or the way they act. You know, their their voice says a lot. You know, sometimes you know the the straight men are, you know, sometimes <coughs> when they get, uh, you know, like oh, you know, like that's that's really a guy, you know, or you know, which it don't matter to me. Yeah, you know, the worst thing you can say is that I make a pretty guy, you know. But um, I mean, it's just I guess a lot of times it's I thank God that I'm blind because I was very out, I'm very outspoken. So if it was times to where um, I would see people looking at me, I'd be like, what? What are you looking at? Take a picture. It'll last long. You know, or, you know, um, turn and look away. You've already saw me. You know, that's that type of thing. But And do you say that? Do you, can you, do you know that people are looking at you? Can you feel their oh, breath? Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. I, I just, I get like, <coughs> a, um, like my body gets hot when I have somebody staring at me for a long time. And so do you, do, do you call them out? Yeah. Or I'll just look their way and be like, <laughs> hi. You know, I'll turn their way. <laughs> I'll ask my friend, look who in the room is look, staring at me. They're like, what are you talking about? Like, look around this room and tell me who's staring at me. They're like, how do you know they're staring at you? I said, uh -huh. my body's feeling hot. And they'll be like, oh, turn to your right a little bit at, a, you know, um, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and wave, you know. And I'll be like, okay, hi, you know. So, and they'll be like, oh, that's when they get embarrassed because, you know. Yeah, then they got clocked. Yeah. Yeah, you clocked so, them. And I love doing that. That's funny. Do you ever act, um, when you're in a strange place, do you ever act like that you're you're seeing something? Like, do you carry a book? Oh, no, but I always do it like when I go to a restaurant. You know, and it's just an instant. And, you know, and I, I don't really realize that I'm doing it until I sit down and they put the menu in front of me. So they put a menu and I'm going to open it like I could see it. You know, so I'll open it and I'll act like I'm able to see the, the menu, you know. But um, 
um, just things like that. Or like when we go to a drive-through, you know, and I'm in the passenger side, I lean over to kind of see the menu, the board, you know, <laughs> what am I going to want today? Let me see. <laughs> well, you know, and I know the numbers, you know, a bigger like me knows, you know, the number six is the bacon ultimate cheeseburger, you know. Where is that? At Jack in the Box. The number six is the bacon ultimate cheeseburger. Yes. That's awful that you know that. Yeah. No, it's great. I love it. Or you <laughs> and, you know, five is the regular ultimate cheeseburger. You know, the Jumbo Jack is number two, I believe. Um, yeah. Or like McDonald's is the number one is the Big Mac combo. You know, number two, three are the quarter pounder, the double quarter pounder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about Wendy's? I know, I know one from Wendy's, actually. The number six is the spicy chicken sandwich. The number four is a baconator. <laughs> <laughs> Was your memory always good? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I've always been, you know, even when I was in high school, you know, I was a graduated with honors. I was always good with memorizing stuff. And But I think it's more now because, you know, it's a must, you know, it's a must for me to memorize. You know, like I can memorize a lot of phone numbers. You know, until I got Siri and I've been spoiled a little bit where I could say. Oh, and you know what? It's going to all go by the wayside, too, once you start letting Siri do everything for you. Mm -hmm. I only remember numbers that, um, one, I have to dial. Right. Um, or two, that I've been dialing forever. Right. <clears throat> like Cassie Nova's. <coughs> I called, I've, I've always called Cassie a lot, right. and so I used to have to dial her number a lot, um, and I, I remember her number. It's also a very easy number. It's got a lot of fives in it. Very the chat line number. It, it, very. Yeah. yeah it's and that's why when I, when I call, um, you know, when I get a house phone or, you know, because I just don't like talking when I'm at home out of a cell phone because it gets hot, um, you know, I call the 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 company and I'll be like can you give me the easiest number to memorize because I'm blind you know just so I'll, yeah, I've had numbers like 210-277-1500 or 4242 or 58-58 or you know things that would be real you've easy. had that many numbers well different numbers yeah <clears throat> well you've moved around quite a bit yeah but your um your San Antonio number has has been Stay your same. number for uh, forever now yeah I've had you're talking about home phone yeah mm -hmm. for about 10 years. How do you know the f when the phone is ringing? I'm playing. That's the joke. Ring. <laughs> that's a joke, girl. <laughs> and now I have it to where it says, Alexis, your phone is ringing. Edna Jean is calling. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do you um, do you have people play tricks on you and hide your, hide your stuff? No. Damn, I need to come down to Houston then. Yeah. I mean, because you know I'd do it. No, I mean it's not. <laughs> I would, not too I would totally enough. like move your bedroom around. Oh no, it'd be hard to, because I have a rope, heavy king size bed that takes up almost the whole room. So, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know when you're gonna move it, so I can tell you where to move it to. And you're living on your own. Yes, from step. And up. and so, um, do you figure out ways to make life easier? Everything's automatic bill pay. Do you, um, you know? Can you, and I'm, and I'm, can you write a check? No. But I pay everything with debit card. I know my debit card number, like the back of my hand. Yeah. You know, so I try to do everything by phone. Yeah. Or, you know, um, um, sometimes the, the account numbers are what I get mixed up because, you know, it's the, you know, energy and gas and, you know, um, Comcast or your cable or, you know, just different things. But. Other than that, like my debit card, I, I I like to do everything more with debit card because I don't like to carry too much money around to begin with, you know, just for my safety, you know, for yeah. my protection and, you know, not that I've been around it and they've done it to me, but, you know, I'm just real cautious. Yeah, and you should be. Money. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so, um, but I, you know, I try to do everything by phone or with debit card, so. Yeah. Um, what is... Your favorite television show right now? Um, I'm trying to think of a television show that I listen to as it's watching me. I, you know, I, there's not a TV show, but I love to hear the news. I love it. I love it. I will get home from the club, you know, at two and wait till four o'clock or three o'clock to hear the world news tonight. Um, ABC is my favorite, um, and stay up till like six o'clock in the morning just listening to the news. Um, Five thirty, watch the news. You know, I never get enough news. I like to turn it to CNN, you know, to hear, like, 
all the things that are going on around the world because you know obviously I can't see you know newspaper clippings or magazine stuff so I just like to hear it and that's that's really my favorite thing to do is listen to the news what do you think is going on right right now with the Pope he's he has stepped down and the Pope is no longer the Pope right he's his holy what are they calling him now his is holy civilian yeah and, <laughs> and has to live in well no you know he has to live in uh, yeah consignment you know or yeah. something and has guards outside until he dies yeah uh, just that don't make no sense but I mean it is what it is and that's what he has to do so now they have to the what is were it? you raised Catholic yes yeah yeah I was an altar boy and was and all that and um, read the lectures and stuff so I yeah, I was my, an altar boy as well. Yeah, did my communion, did my confirmation, so I can get married through the church, the Catholic Church, if I want. To. What is um, what is your confirmation name? What is my what? Did you have a confirmation name? I don't remember. When you're confirmed, you um, you choose a a saint and or a yeah, no, a, I, a confirmation I, name. I, that's one thing I don't remember. I mean. It was both. And, you know, forever since I was, um, I guess, 11, I was confirmed, maybe 12. Um, <clears throat> I I added the J to my initials. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. I mean, I didn't add it to my real name, right. but um, whenever I do my initials, and I do my initials a lot, right. um, I, I, I've, I've been doing RDJC forever. Um, and I added the J because of the confirmation name my confirmation name was Jonathan really? yes because I had the biggest crush on Jonathan Hart <laughs> oh and that's from um, heart to heart yeah, okay yes ma'am okay, I wanted to be so Stephanie so bad with all that all that red hair um, oh my right and there's just like I wanted to be Vanessa there was this one girl in high school that oh my gosh she was so beautiful and stunning and had the most beautiful sun in color hair and long and pretty and would always curl in her name was Vanessa Marie Martinez <laughs> I remember yes and I all until this day I will use that name in various places what's your name Vanessa Vanessa hi I'm Vanessa hi I'm Vanessa Marie Martinez call me <laughs> when people <laughs> and that's when I use Vanessa it's when I usually met meet them on the phone and they think I'm a straight woman <laughs> <laughs> so I have my Vanessa, Alexis, and different names that I use for different little codes to know where I met them. Me too. Well, I mean, when I'm when I'm Edna Jean, the Sunday school teacher, I'm Edna Jean Robinson. When I'm her evil twin sister, that's gorgeous. I'm Elizabeth. And when um, I'm in drag and just meeting a boy, I'm Susan. Susan uh, Moriarty. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Because I don't want them to. <laughs> To give every <laughs> and normally Susan Moriarty is really pretty, you know, and um, and they're all, what are you doing later? <laughs> Apparently, I'm coming over to your place. Right, when you're walking into your car back in the back parking lot. Yeah, right. When you're pulling your suitcase. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving to Austin. Yeah. Yeah, and they they would probably believe it. Well, you know, and and um. How often do you get hit on? Um, it's hard to tell because I'm usually the one doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's up, you know, I'm reverse. You know, whenever I hear a cute boy, I don't care if they're gay or straight. You know, I just go by voices when they sound handsome. You know, I start my it just clicks on automatically. It's just something naturally. I have a very flirtatious personality. What does handsome sound like? Um. I don't know the def I don't know the definition of that one, but I, it's just it just. I just, the way they speak, you know, um, a lot of deepness to the voice is a turn on. Um, sometimes the way um, they pronounce certain things or like uh, accents are my real, you know, my weak point. I love when a man has like that type of accent that, you know, it sounds very, you know, they're from a foreign country. I love that. What, what foreign country does it the most? Um, I believe Mexican. Yeah. 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 Like the Mexican that you know, but they speak very well English, but you can still hear that accent in it. Yeah, you still you still got a little bit of the roll of the R and right, and yeah. and, the, and and it's kind of I, I call it thick tongued. Right, very like Mario Lopez. Yeah. Oh yes. But Mario Lopez is really Americanized. Right. Yeah. But you know, very you know, he still has a little bit of that Latin. Did you ever hear? Um, oh, what's his name? He was the bronze medalist from Miami. 
Um, he in gymnastics over the summer. Um, oh my gosh. Now that I know Apollo, not not that I know him, but I. That's another one that. I'm oh, he about. was so so gorgeous. He was the bronze medalist um, in gymnastics, and he is beautiful. And he's got you know the big thick round lips and he's got a really thick tongue so he, he kind of um, um, has a little bit of that Cuban oh, yeah. um, that little Cuban Miami um, right. uh, and it, it, it is so sexy just like William Levy oh. yes but his is Brazilian his is just really really thick right. and he is he's gorgeous too mm -hmm. and um, so Handsome can be someone that carries himself very mature. You know, somebody that doesn't act childish. How do you know? The way they, their personality. You know, the way they speak, the way they um, carry themselves. As far as you know, the you know the um, what am I trying to say? Um, it's it's hard to explain it. You know, it's just yeah. You know, um, and then of course I always ask my friends, "Oh, girl, does he look cute? Or how does he look? You know, is that trade or no? Or yay or nay? <laughs> you know, we have our little, you know." And they and 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 your friends will know what what is trade to you because we all have a different idea of what is trade to us. Right, and they know what kind of, you know. And my favorite in the whole wide world type of guys are the Hispanic thugs, gangster-looking, tattoos, ball-headed, you know. Um, kind of guys I guess being from San Antonio that's what I was raised around so those are my favorite those are usually my baby's daddies I like a Hispanic man who shaves out his beard into the little pencil into the little pencil um, oh that little goat like the, the little goatee the sideburns and, and the sideburn that comes all the way down and, then, and and it's just got like this little um, pencil beard I think that's really hot and you know who I had a big crush but about? I also like the same boy that trims out his eyebrows uh -huh. so that it's Very all metrosexual. Um, it, I think it's a little gay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I you know who I really gay. had a crush on when I lived here in Dallas? He worked at S4. A bar back, um, Travis, what's his name? Travis Anderson. Oh. He still he still works there. Oh my God, he's so adorable to me. I don't, it's something about him. I, you know, he doesn't come off being very gay until he starts talking to you for like a five minute into the conversation, but it's just something about him. I just had the most biggest crush on him. He's a very sweet him boy. Him and the other shot guy that has no longer working there. Um, Cameron? Yeah. Yes. Those were my two favorites. Yeah, Cameron, Cameron doesn't work there anymore. Yeah. And hasn't in a long time. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, actually, he had left before I left Alice. So but. So you're the current reigning um, Miss Unlimited. What are your What are your goals for the, for the next year? Uh, well, I give it up in <coughs> August. So um, I want to have at least 10 contestants. When I won, there was eight of us. So, you know, to be able to at least have two more contestants, kind of try to build it up a little bit, you know, because, um, you know, with the economy right now, it's hard to find promoters and stuff that want to be willing to, you know, be promoting for the system. But, you know, I just want to make it grow a little bit and um, realize, you know, to let people know that there is another system, that it's a limited system. And, you know, they're really, really good people. Um, it's a big family. And, you know, I just want to um, just kind of open people's eyes with that system. And so what is the system about? It's about, it's a, very having to do with family oriented. You know, it's very, um, um, you know, they're always want, they're, that's their big thing. They want to be a family, you know, you know, they want to help each other out. They're always there for each other, you know, when something goes wrong. You know, just like any other system, of course. But, you know, it's just... It's it's been a phenomenal year for me. I've had a great time, you know. Um, you know, Glenn Moore, the the national promoter, is is amazing promoter. You know, has done everything for me, bent backwards to do help me with whatever I need as far as you know travel or you know um, when I get there they accommodate to me and you know ha have you know everything laid out for me ready to go and so it's just you know it's been a, a good experience and it's just. Um, I don't, you know, it's hard to explain. It's just been a phenomenal year so far. Well, very good. And you have, you've, you've competed at EOI, and you've competed, um, and you were your former Texas Entertainer of the Year, aren't yes. you? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so am I. Right. Um, you are um, 
in the at-large system and the regular US of A system and um, you've been top 10 in both of those systems yeah. um, so what do you say when uh, someone says that um, you can't you can't be that national girl because you don't have eyes and you know and that's why I, and, and it comes down to you know an interview that always comes up um, and it's you know how I know I'm, I'm sure it does yep and I, you know not, what I always say is how would you not you know how would you know that I'm not going to be able to be a good national title holder if you don't give me the opportunity to show you you know, obviously, I know what I'm getting myself into. I, you know, I've done my research. I know what I have to do, and I know what I, I'm capable of doing. So, you know, nobody would ever know if you don't ever give me the opportunity to win. I'm not saying to give it to me. I'm not saying, you know, um, you know, hand it to me or feel, you know, give me sympathy points. No, that's not what I'm asking for. But, you know, just give me the fair opportunity. You know, if I deserve to win, let me win. You know, it's just like with an incident that happened two years ago, you know, and you know what I'm talking about, when they send you A&W robbed, <laughs> you know, uh, one of the pageants that I did, and, you know, I got first runner-up, and, you know, everybody was saying I should have won. You know, that, to me, makes me feel like a winner already because the people see it, you know. It's not just me or, you know, certain, just my group of friends, you know. No, the whole, you know, audience realized what had happened, and, you know, and it's sad that it happened like that, but you know what, that just made me a stronger entertainer, you know, and it's just... Um, it's people like that that make me stronger because it makes me try harder and you know I'm a very dedicated person and I always give it a hundred and ten percent when I do something so it, they, you know and when they doubt me and it's always before I get there that I they already have their doubts you know how is she able to be able to travel by herself or how is she be able to get there and who's gonna help her and you know I know what I have to do I know that if I were to win I have you know if, if I have to have somebody travel with me that's my expense not the promoters not the national promoter not the other queen you know it's nobody's expense but mine you know I know what I have to do I've done my homework I know what the airport helps me with you know I've traveled by myself throughout the whole country already so you know it you know it's hard to know that if I could be a good to the national title holder especially for whatever system doubts me if you don't give me the opportunity to show you there it is and we're going to give you the opportunity to watch Alexis Nicole Whitney all weekend in the Rose Room at 3911 Cedar Springs inside and upstairs at Station 4. I'm excited to have you back. Thank you. The current reigning Miss Unlimited in the Rose Room Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Alexis Nicole Whitney. Alexis, thank you very much for coming in today and spending a little hour with me and chit-chatting. I, I wish you could see yourself, so um, <laughs> you could fire that makeup artist. <laughs> Oh, well, it's nice to hear you, too. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. We're here every Tuesday, every Friday from 3 to 4 on Ustream. Just keep breathing. Thanks for joining us, Alexis, one more time. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you.